Okay, figured we'd start with a uh, eight-speed video here. Uh, I'm trying to remember what this transmission is called. Um, 8HP ZF2, right there, ZF8HP2. So this is uh, an eight-speed transmission that is behind a 6.4 gas engine in the Ram 3500. Um, so I'm going to go over the fastest and simplest way to tune this transmission at home that doesn't require logging or anything else. This is basically uh, just a base here. Here's a small change that you make. Um, and then these changes will do this or do that. So the first thing you want to do is go over to the torque management. Go to upshift. Do not use force torque intervention. Force torque intervention is pulling torque before it even gets to the gear. Um, a lot of times that is a band-aid that shops use when they can't get a vehicle to shift correctly. Okay, so what we're going to do is super simple. You're going to go into the torque management and you want to make small changes at a time. Okay, now the 6.4 makes a decent amount of torque. Uh, but it really doesn't make that much. This is not a diesel, things like that. Um, these transmissions are good for a decent amount of torque. You don't want to overdo it, uh, but there is room to play with. So we're just going to go into the one, two, I shouldn't say one, two. We're going to go into all the eight speed shifts under normal, and we're going to pull 10% of the torque management out of it. Now, I will make a video later on logging and kind of show you what you're looking for on the shifts. Uh, but this is a good place to start uh, by making small changes. Um, you can get desired outcome um, over making, you know, a, a certain amount of files. I mean, this might take you an entire day or an entire week to do. Um, but if it's your own personal vehicle, um, this it doesn't matter how long it takes okay so what you're going to do is you're going to take 10 percent of the torque reduction away from the main torque intervention from the normal table now um each of these say performance sport max full drive low blah blah blah, blah. the full drive low is pretty obvious which one that is performance sport and max uh, on pickup trucks more than likely you're not going to hit any of these uh, there's a good chance in tow haul you might do one of these. Um, so later on, if you want to come apply these same changes to these tables and test it, that's fine. But stick to the normals to start with. Um, and I usually just stick to the upshift unless there's a desired change in downshift that's needed. Now, something to remember is the 8-speed is a nice, smooth transmission, uh, but smooth is bad. Smooth means slip. Slip means reduced transmission life. A nice, firm, positive shift is going to make the transmission last longer. It will not shift like a Cadillac, uh, but it'll last a hell of a lot longer than a Cadillac. Okay, so that's the first place you start. We go to shift pressures. We go to upshift. You're going to ignore basically all of this crap in the middle here. Just ignore it all for now. Okay, you're going to come here and <clears throat> you're going to take right here. You're going to add 15 PSI. Pull that to the zero. Okay, so it's going to be right around this 200 some mark. Okay, and you have to make sure this is on PSI uh, as well because I don't I don't work in bar. So uh, I'm in the United States, so we uh, use PSI. Um, so you're going to basically do that on all these tables across the board. And then you pull it down to zero. Sorry. And you click this button here. And make sure that it's nice and smooth. Uh, now, what you can do later on is, let's say it's shifting hard down low, but it's shifting soft up top. You know, you can come through, reduce here, come through, add here interpolate between them and you can make changes like that but right now the desired outcome is to change it all the way across the board and if you need to come back and change something later then you can um, and then when this file this is actually someone sent me this file on youtube and when this file is done i'm just going to send this file back to them and let them uh 
run it themselves and they can comment on this video and say what it how it drove after this first uh this first set of changes here now this would be mild to moderate more like more or less on the mild side um, these first changes might barely even be noticeable, but that's okay because you don't want to make so many changes at once that you can cause damage to transmission. Um, a lot of people will come in and add 30 PSI right out the gate, which is fine depending on the type of power that the transmission makes, uh, but it's harder to work backwards than it is to work forward. Okay, so now we go to shift timing, up shift, and I mean, look at how crazy these shifts are 1000 milliseconds is a full second okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to make again small change and we're going to take 50 milliseconds which isn't really that much we're going to take 50 milliseconds off of each one okay now this again is something to play with now you can attempt to do it all on this first table and then make changes to the fill and the ramp time. Uh, but I prefer to make changes to all of them at the same time. I prefer to make small changes across the board and um, start with the 50 millisecond changes. Um, and then after you do this whole thing, maybe another time, then when I come through here the following time, um i'll make small even smaller changes like 25 milliseconds okay the thing here is you what you want to watch is you want to watch these rpms here too um and this is turbine speed so again this there's a little bit more to explain about that you can look into this yourself a little bit here but you want to make sure that nowhere on here when you're done is below 30 to 50 milliseconds. I mean, that's pretty much um, <clears throat> what I can recommend. Um, I don't see a reason to have to try and have it shift any faster than that. Uh, this is not a DSG. It's not a freaking. It's not a race car. I mean, this is a freaking. This is a heavy duty pickup truck, and all we're doing here is giving the pickup truck a little bit longer life and a lot better feeling shift. Okay. And like I said, you're going to do 50 all the way across the board here, 50 milliseconds. Okay, so on this specific vehicle, um, I would take it out and drive it and see how it shifts, see if it firmed up at all. Okay, and what I would do before I went too much farther, here, let me finish taking these in here quick. I guess I could have been a fancy person and like sped through this, but uh, that's, I don't see a reason for that. So there's a big thing when you work on a lot of these that you're going to notice, okay? Now, this had a crap load of timing here, this not so much. This ramp timetable looks very similar to basically every other 8-speed automatic table, okay? So when you make your first set of changes and you go 50 seconds, 50 milliseconds off of all of these on the first set, Honestly, I um, the second time around, if you're going to come through here again, don't make any changes to these two tables, okay? Because this is a crap load of time here. So if you test this vehicle out and you're like, okay, I want a little bit more bump, come back here and bump this table for this specific vehicle. Do not bump these other tables, Um yet either okay so now let's take a look here torque converter this is a um something to try out on your own um the torque converter here has lock up here basically in every gear um, some people will lock out the bottom gears some people won't um there is another option instead of locking out the other gears and the other option would be to come through to go to the torque converter and let's just say uh, torque converter mapping the other option here would be to do something like this 
<clears throat> and set your maps to the same map all the way across the board. Okay, so what we have here is we have current gear versus torque converter pattern, okay? And what this will do is allow you to have just eight <clears throat> torque converter maps that you need to change, okay? Now, this isn't fully um, what you might want to do. So this, I'll explain a little bit more here. There is going to be a map in here somewhere for towing, okay? Now, let's go, let's, let's just go back here, okay? Let's see maybe if we can if we can find something quick here. And you might be able to go into scanner and find it. Um, I've never really looked in because I've never really had to screw with the torque converter for towing. A lot of times what I do is I make one solid set of torque converter tables, um, drive it around, test it, and I deal with what I like. Um, so let's see, maps 31 through 34, maps 1 through 10. Okay, um, one thing you'll notice right away by looking at this is all the lower gears, the RPMs are higher. More than likely, this is going to be the tables that are used while towing. Um, but like I said, you have to go through and find what you like, whatever. Um, me personally, I prefer to leave the torque converter lock lockup ability there, um, but I like to come through and I like to change the RPMs that it locks at. Now, <clears throat> unlike shift schedule, um, which we haven't got to yet, this is uh, standard RPM. This is the engine RPM that it's going to lock at, okay? Now, me personally, I don't like to see um, an engine driving under 16 to 1700 RPMs, okay? So if it's going to be under those RPMs, I would prefer not to have the engine lug, so I prefer not to have the torque converter lock up. So what I would come through, and this this video isn't going to be long enough for me to fully break down the torque converter section here, okay? But I would come through and make sure that the electronic torque converter lockup is set so that the torque converter does not lock until you are at an RPM that's appropriate for the torque converter to lock up. Um, so that's that so that's something for another video uh we'll make another video explaining it but it's up to you some people will come through right away here and uh they'll just lock out one through five and just get rid of it okay um the other thing to do and i already have um, some videos explaining shift schedule um, for testing the transmission and regular driving uh me personally i would come through the shift schedule here and I would completely make it one gear all the way across the board, okay? So typically 34 or 32 is cruise. So I would set, yeah, 34. I would set this whole table to 34 while you're testing it. And I would go out and I would test all the settings um, before you um, put all the rest of the tables back on because it's really hard to dial in what a transmission is doing if you have 90 different tables that it can control okay so i personally recommend that i personally recommend setting it all to table 34 which is your cruise control table um, or setting it to zero or five which is typically a um, regular driving table here um, it's up to you which table you choose but i would do that and then later on i would go back and set this table back to stock, okay? Um, I'm trying to think of what else needs to be said here. Okay, so we change the oncoming clutch for normal. For shift pressure, we add 15 PSI from 224 up, and then we interpolate it down to zero. Um, we go to shift timing, we go to upshift, we change nominal slip, fill slip, and ramp slip, or sorry, nominal slip time, fill time, ramp time, we take 50, milliseconds away from all of these on this specific transmission and then we don't take any more away from these two until way later on a little bit more advanced okay now uh, we go to torque management we're going to take we times it by 0.90 which is take 10 percent away from the whole main torque intervention 
Um, and then what we do from here is we're going to go out and dry the vehicle. Well, you're going to open up the VCM scanner and you're going to go and connect the scanner while turning the vehicle on and you're going to go to the transmission and you're going to reset adaptives. Uh, and then you're going to drive this around for 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, no highway speeds, yeah. just driving around town, start stops, a few wide open throttles, things like that, and see how it goes. Right. Now, if you have a shift flare, which is where it attempts to shift, and then it basically seems like it misshifts and revs up a little bit, uh, that means you need to add, typically it means you need to add more pressure to that gear shift, okay? So in that case, you'll come back here to shift pressure up shift, and you'll add five to 10 PSI, and then you'll interplay down. Um, but like I said, we'll make another video that fully explains how to diagnose what you're running into when you're out there driving. Uh, the main thing to pay attention to on your shift schedule is making sure that it's actually shifting at the RPM that is requested. Now, for those of you who haven't watched the shift schedule video, you should probably go back and watch it. Um, but I'll just make a, a quick um, shot here. You can get this calculator from the tuning school. It's free off their website. Post this in here. Here's the RPMs for the ship table. Okay. Basically ignore these. This is going to be whatever it's set to in here. See 100.4, which I come through and I change this to 100. We don't need that 100.4 crap. Um, and then basically, you know, here is what your RPMs is going to shift at 4,500, 5,500, 5,500, 54, whatever, all across the board. So make sure at this throttle, it's actually shifting at these RPMs. If it's overshooting the RPMs, it means that you're driving through the gear and that's going to require a little bit more changes as well. Uh, but this will be the, I guess, the basic video for the um, ZF, what the hell is it again? ZF 8HP2. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try and I'm going to send this file back to the customer. I'm going to post this video and then um, I'm the customer, the person on YouTube, and uh, they can comment and say, you know, what they felt off these first changes.